Happy Labor Day! It's Apple Stump Bushcraft Stuff and Things. Coming back with another amazing and enthralling adventure. A while back, um, maybe a year or two ago, we demonstrated how to make a yellow jacket trap and showed some of the results. We got some pushback on that episode. We were told we don't know how to make one of those traps and that's not how you make them and so on and so forth. So we made another one. I'm going to show you how to do it here. It doesn't involve bananas, but uh, it might make you go bananas when you see how well they work. Or, as the uh, pushback said, they don't work. Take your choice. Uh, very low cost. doesn't involve much. And uh, so I'm going to set out the materials that we'll need and we'll get started. So, in no particular order, the things that we'll need to make this yellow jacket trap that'll never work, that you'll be wasting your time making or even watching me build it. A 2 liter soda bottle, doesn't matter what brand. A length of kite string or some other kind of cordage. A cigarette lighter. A pair of scissors. A pair of pliers. A knife. A brazing torch, a nail, and a striker. One more thing you'll need, which we don't show right now, is a packet of yellow jacket attractant. And we'll whip that out when the time comes. So stand by. In addition to what I put out before, I forgot to mention you'll need a little bit of dish soap. Doesn't matter what brand. Quarter cup of sugar. You're going to need about 16 ounces of water or something like that. And yellow jacket attractant, which is this. And it comes two in a pack. I already used one for another trap, but it looks like that. So there. I'll include the water. So there you have basically everything you need to make one. So let's get started and make one, shall we? We shall. First thing we're going to do is get our string ready or our cordage. So this happens to be a plastic based or probably polyester woven kite string sized cordage. So we're just going to flame the ends of it to melt the strands together because it makes it easier to pass them through the holes that will be provided in the bottle uh, so it can be hung on something. So we'll do both ends. Just set that aside and let it cool. Next thing we want to do is cut the bottle. I'm going to cut it right along the top of this label. So I'm not going to take the label off just yet. Take a knife and start the, start the hole there. And then, because we want this to be pretty precise cut, I'm going to use scissors. little tag there. There we go. Put it in there. And we have a way to make it stick. So the next thing we can do is take the label off the best we can. Right along the right there. And so we end up with something like that, but who cares really, right? So the next thing we want to do is position this top right here so that it leaves no room for bugs to get out and forms a funnel so they can get in. 
So that's where the nail and the brazing torch come in. So we're going to light it. Pretty low flame is all that's necessary. So part of what gets this funnel type thing to stick in there is that we're going to heat up a nail. And make a couple of holes with it. Pretty well is going to seal that together. I'll turn out the torch for now, and we're going to pass our kite string through those holes. There we go. Alright, string's through. We want to make about an even amount, so Stretch it out that way, this way, so that when the bottle is hanging, Part of the strategy of this device is to have some vapor, odor, some kind of smell that the bugs want to come to, and so that's what the attractant is all about. So again, we're going to punch some holes in there. And those are going to be used for letting some vapor out. Yeah. Some of those are going to be inside the funnel. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just going to punch into the funnel, but not the outer bottle. I think I punched through the outer bottle that time. Didn't mean to. Okay. about four of them, it's enough. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is put in the water and the sugar. is that the water is going to be will the water will reach I should say almost to the 
bottom of the funnel so there's not a lot of room in there for them to fly around. So it looks like we might need just a little bit more water. The sugar in there seems to help attract them. So we're ready to go. The very last thing we need in there is uh, the yellow jacket attractant. It doesn't have to be a particular color. It doesn't have to be yellow. Nothing in there has to be any particular color at all. Um, they come to the smell and that's about it. Um, I also like to punch a few holes around the outside for vapor escape purposes because it helps to spread the smell a little bit better than just those ones I have at the very edge. So we might just go ahead and do that. How about we do that? Just a couple. I just usually put about four, one on each quarter of the bottle. Punch them low enough so that they don't hit the funnel. accidentally punched before. Okay. So all that remains is to find a place to hang it and to put in the attractant. So I'm thinking of a place where I might want to put this. And uh, when I think of it, we'll put it out there. So that's all there is to making one, and then I'll show you how we're going to hang it up, and uh, when I put the attractant in, I've got to do that very carefully, not to get any on me, or anything that I don't want yellow jackets swarming around, because they're Johnny on the spot when they smell that stuff. They'll be back with you shortly. So there was one thing that I forgot to show you. We had it out on the ingredients list and didn't put it in there, and that's a couple of drops of uh, just generic dish soap. I know that's more than a couple of drops, but you get the idea. What that does is lower the surface tension of the water so that the bugs can't spread their legs out and uh, sit on top of the water and survive. It makes them break through the surface tension and drown, and that's what we want them to do. So that's what the dish soap was for. Sorry I forgot that. It's five minutes to seven in the evening right now, and the bugs aren't very active. so. We just hung this new trap up on the fence in an area where I don't have to go in order to mow the lawn. I'll show you a little close-up of where it is. So that's it. You see we got one or two interested, maybe three, four, I see four or five buzzing around it right now. So the wind is starting to carry the, the uh, pheromone around and they're starting to show some interest in it. We'll take a look at it about this time tomorrow afternoon. 
and see how many we've caught, if any. Because after all, this trap is bound to fail. We don't know how to build traps for yellow jackets. We decided to change locations where we hung the trap originally on the fence. Have this pine tree here where I gather my sap to make refined pine sap with. And there's happened to be a broken branch there hanging at a convenient altitude for the bees to come. They fly around closer to the ground than they do up high in the air. So here we are after about 24 hours of hanging from the pine tree. And you can see that we haven't caught a single yellow jacket. As all the critics have said, we don't know how to make yellow jacket traps. Well, that's not how you do it. Of course, it would appear that um, the yellow jackets are not so sure. Once again, all that's in that bottle is some sugar water, a little bit of dish soap, and one packet of yellow jacket attractant, which is the key to the success of the whole operation, or failure. So you can see it's a success or a failure. Those who want to troll this idea can say, oh, you didn't catch them all, look how many of them there are out there. And those that want to see the glass half full can say, look how many are dead inside the trap, right? Okay, so this is a somewhat cynical and sarcastic today, apple stump bushcraft stuff and things. Saying thanks for watching. If you want to build one of these things, you may or may not catch some yellow jackets the way we did, or didn't. And uh, at any rate, fall's on the way, so have a great time. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Adios.